In today's video, we are going to explore possible solutions or strategies you can do to help a parent living with dementia who also abuses alcohol. Did you know that it is estimated that about 50% of people over the age of 12 years old use alcohol in the United States? I know that I used alcohol. I never used to, but later in my life, I started drinking. How many of you, like me, have a parent who you believe may be drinking too much? Or have you wondered whether their alcohol misuse over the years may have contributed to their cognitive impairment? And what about you? Do you drink alcohol moderately and worry whether it can actually, or if it has impacted your own thinking processes? And what is moderate? Moderate means one to two glasses of wine per day. Let me ask you something. When do you think you should be concerned about alcohol misuse? That is a very easy question to answer. If you are at all worried about either their consumption of alcohol or even worse, your own consumption of alcohol, it is time to do something about it. Don't be like me and wait too long to try to intervene. There are resources out there to help you or a loved one with dementia with alcohol abuse. Let me tell you a quick story about how things came to a head in our lives. There had been, um, I had been noticing for the last several months that my dad's hands were shaking all the time. Because there's a history of Parkinson's disease in his side of the family, I thought maybe we needed to have him tested for Parkinson's disease. Then one day, my dad was helping my husband and I paint out our apartment when he fell. He ended up in the emergency room and they did a CAT scan, but they also did some blood work. And it was found that he has low sodium. That was a couple of years ago. Now, fast forward to December of 2021. Over the Christmas holidays, my dad's alcohol consumption had increased significantly. He started getting confused. He was having difficulty processing. He was having difficulty moving. He went from totally independent to needing help with putting on his shoes, going to the bathroom, and walking. It was very scary. I told my sister he needed to go to the hospital, but dad refused. A couple of days later, he was worse, and finally I prevailed and took him to the hospital. He was admitted to the hospital with a critical sodium level and ended up in the ICU. The critical sodium level is a direct result of alcohol abuse. Immediately, I let the physicians know about his longstanding 50-year history of alcohol abuse. You see, my mom and dad, you never would have known how much alcohol they used. It never showed, but the damage was already there. My name is Lizette Kluta, and I'm a dementia co coach and consultant. And in today's video, we are talking about dementia and alcohol abuse and strategies we implemented in our lives to help our parents who are living with alcohol abuse. Back to my dad and his stay in the hospital. While he was in the hospital, the doctors weaned him off of uh, alcohol and he has stayed off of alcohol. But we had a problem with my mom. You see, my mom and dad drank together and my mom has dementia. My sister and I, we did everything wrong. We tried to reason with my mom. You can't, she has dementia. We tried to guilt her into not drinking because my dad couldn't drink. Of course, nothing that we tried worked. So with the permission of her physician, I started to wean her off of alcohol. My parents were wine drinkers, and they used five-liter boxes of wine as their alcohol consumption. And using a technique my husband developed, we determined that we could replace the alcohol in the box of wine with non-alcoholic wine without disrupting the outside of the box. So slowly over six months, we decreased the amount of real wine with non-alcoholic wine in the box until we got to a mixture of about one bottle of wine in a five-liter box then mixed with non-alcoholic wine and water. Please remember to discuss anything regarding this with your parent's physician, but it was done with my mom's physician's blessing, and we did it slowly over six months so that she would not experience alcohol withdrawal. 
almost a year later, my mom now knows that she is not drinking alcohol and her thinking has somewhat cleared up. So now I'm going to show you a video of how to replace the alcohol in a box of wine with non-alcoholic wine. Welcome to the rest of the video on how to replace a five liter box of wine with non-alcoholic wine. So to start the video, I'm just gonna show you all of the pieces that you will need. You will need a box of wine that's real wine or a bottle of wine that's real wine. You will need an empty box of wine so that you can replace it with the non-alcoholic wine. You need a gallon bag, a pair of scissors, a zip tie, the little zip ties work best. Obviously you need your non-alcoholic wine, Today we are using Ariel. This is the first time I'm using Ariel. Before this, we used a brand called Free. Uh, you need water. And those are pretty much the, oh, and the most important thing is a side cutter to get the, the zip tie off. So those are the, the pieces of equipment that you will need to replace the wine with non-alcoholic wine into a five liter box without disrupting the outside of the box. Obviously the box had to have been opened once in order to do it. But I'm going to open the bottles of wine and then we will be back. The next step of the process is to take your empty box of wine, your empty box of wine, and then take your plastic bag, your gallon bag, you cut a section of the corner off just big enough for the spigot to go through. Open up the bag, feed your spigot into this bag. Now comes the tricky part, the part that my husband does a much better job of than me. You take your zip tie, you take your zip tie, and then you have to make a seal around the base of the wine box so that when you're putting the wine in that it doesn't leak onto the box. So this is the, the, the two trickiest parts for me or putting on the zip tie so it doesn't leak, as well as then getting the zip tie off again. Um, those are my challenges. My husband does better with that. He's usually the one that makes these boxes of wine for me. So try to tighten it as much as possible. Then you have to open the spigot on the inside of the wine box so that you can replace it. So now we have, we have the, the bag and the wine and uh, the and we're gonna start to pour the wine into the box. So I'm gonna pour the wine into the bag. The gravity is gonna take care of the rest. So the ratio that I use now is three bottles of non-alcoholic wine, two bottles of water, and one bottle of regular wine. And then I mix it in like this. So three bottles of non-alcoholic wine, one bottle of alcoholic wine, and water for the rest. It took us about four to five months to go from five liters of wine replaced with one bottle of non-alcoholic wine so that we slowly weaned my mom off of alcohol. So this is the last of the non-alcoholic wine going into the bottle, into the box. What I'm gonna do after this is I'm going to actually put one bottle of wine into one of these empty bottles just to make it easier. Um, from this box, we, my husband puts a zip tie on the bottom of the box so that we know that this is actually one that has alcohol in. So as these boxes start to get unhappy because you know you can only do this so many times with one certain box before it starts to degrade, then we replace it with a different box. And then I'm gonna pour the water into one of these as well, two bottles of water and then we're going to replace it. When it starts to get full, you gotta get creative and turn it so that it'll drain in. Let gravity do the work. Here comes the alcoholic wine that I just poured into the other bottle. Why do we keep one bottle of alcohol in? Mostly, I think for the taste. Um, for a long time, my mom was not aware that we had weaned her off of wine. I think when we started going too far into um, decreasing the wine and replacing it with water, the non-alcoholic wine with a little bit of water was because it is extremely expensive. It's about eight to $9 a bottle. So it's not an inexpensive process. 
it definitely is something to consider. However, the results of her being off of the wine have been spectacular. Um, I can honestly say I have my mom back to a large degree, even though she does have a measure of dementia from her massive aneurysm when she was um, 42 years old. Now I'm going to pour water into the bottle of wine and we're gonna do this again. So I'm not gonna show that part of the video. Um, I will be back in a minute. When you start to get to the box being full, you can burp it, which is what I call it. Just try to squeeze the massage the inside of the bag. It'll push a little air in and you will be able to drain the rest. Have gravity help you. My seal isn't great, so I'm making a mess on my desk, but that's better than the, um, we usually do this in the kitchen, but for the sake of the video, I wanted to do it where we had a little bit better control over the, um, the video. So squeeze the inside of the bag. We used to overfill it a little bit more uh, just to cut down on the amount of times that we have to do this. Just make sure that you close the spigot before you do anything else. Because the next step is what's for me, one of the hardest steps, which is now getting the zip tie back off. The best is a side cutter. Use a side cutter to do it, but you gotta make sure that you close the spigot. I heard it, didn't release yet. Extra light here if I need it. There we go, zip tie off bag off, all of the trash goes in one spot. And we have replaced a box of wine with non-alcoholic wine. This one got a little wet today with this video, but it's okay, it's at the end of its rain anyway. Um, now you might be asking, why did we go to this elaborate ruse, if you would, regarding uh, the alcohol and the alcohol consumption. It's because you cannot reason with somebody who has dementia, and we tried to do that with my mother when my dad was um, needing to abstain from alcohol because of medical issues. And we created a tremendous conflict, and we decided that it was healthier for my mom to be weaned from alcohol, even though we did it without her knowledge or permission. It has been a tremendous blessing my mother is significantly better than she was um, a year ago when we started this process. She is now aware that she is not um, drinking anymore. We've kept the alcohol in, like I said, one bottle of alcohol in this five liter box. And now she feels like she has control over um, still getting her special drink at night. There are, if, you, if your loved one doesn't drink wine, then there are replacements for almost every type of alcohol has a non-alcoholic substitute. My dad now drinks non-alcoholic beer. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and we are going to um, be back next week with a new video. So to sum up today's video, how do you manage somebody who has dementia and alcohol? How do you wean them from alcohol to a non-alcoholic alternative? Please remember to always do this under the supervision of a physician and be creative and use creative strategies. And alcohol can significantly impact people's cognitive abilities. If you liked this video, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and come back for more videos. And as I end all of my videos, may the Lord bless you and keep you and have a great day.